Hey there, surrogate game creators. In today's video, we are going to show you how to resolve all the different types of possible issues that you could be having while creating your own game on surrogate.tv. So whether it's something very simple like Wi-Fi not working or camera not configuring to more advanced things like remotely connecting through SSH to your Raspberry Pi and seeing the logs, all of this will be covered in this video. So if you have any issues and you're stuck creating your game, this is the right place to be. Let's get started. So I already have my Raspberry Pi pre-installed with the image, but I haven't set it up any further and we'll be looking to different issues through the actual game creation process to try and understand what could be wrong with the game and also seeing how can you understand what are these issues. For this test, I'll be using my Sphero Rover with Raspberry Pi 3A, but, you can, but if you have a different robot or a different Raspberry Pi, that is totally fine, no worries. And yeah, let's begin by turning this on, getting our game engine, Wi-Fi and other things running and see what could be possibly going wrong if there are any issues. So I already plugged my Raspberry Pi with the pre-installed image to my power bank of the Sphero Rover and I also created the game uh, on Sergey.tv. However, I haven't gone any further. Uh, so let's start by adding the game engine to the game token to our game. So let's switch to our dashboard. And as you can see, I still don't have any robots, so I'm gonna go uh, to the game settings. I'm gonna copy the token, then I'm gonna go to the Wi-Fi. And as you can see, I here have my circuit RPI, so the hotspot of our Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to connect to it. Now, if you don't know the password, uh, it's Cre it's Surrogate TV. So no caps, nothing, you just enter Surrogate TV as the Wi-Fi password. On some machines, like on Windows, it might say that it's not a pin and you just, there's a button under that you say continue anyway, and then it will uh, connect you to the hotspot. But okay, now we are connected. As you can see, we don't have any internet anymore and we're connected to the Surrogate RPI. So I'm gonna go to the page and I am going to enter the token. I am going to copy the IDs. I'm not gonna yet put my game type or anything. I'm just gonna connect to Wi-Fi, our Raspberry Pi to make sure that uh, the basic system is working. So now I'm gonna connect to our Wi-Fi. So I have internet again. I'm gonna go to the dashboard. I'll probably restart the page once just to make sure. And there we go. And what do we see? We see that the streamer is currently red. So let me just check on my Raspberry Pi. Uh, what is the issue? Let's maybe switch the scene. So I'm checking my Raspberry Pi and I realized that, for example, now I forgot to connect my camera. So I have this Raspberry Pi CSI camera and I totally forgot to connect it to my Raspberry Pi. So what I have to do now is turn it off turn off the Raspberry Pi, connect the camera, and then put it back in. If you're using a USB camera, you don't have to do it, but the ribbon cable camera, RPI CSI, you gotta be careful. So I'm gonna turn off my Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna connect the camera and hopefully this will solve the issue. All right, so I have my camera connected to the Raspberry Pi and now I'm gonna plug it in into the power bank to power the Raspberry Pi and hopefully our issue will be solved. This is one of the more common issues we see if the streamer is not working. Usually it's either uh, your camera is not connected or the second option, which is usually unlikely, but it can happen, is that your video capture device is not UVC compliant. Uh, and because of that, it just won't work on a Raspberry Pi or other Linux devices. Some capture cards from Elgato, for example, the new ones, they just don't work on Linux. So keep that in mind. Uh, but so yeah, always make sure that your camera actually supports Linux, that's the Raspberry Pi as well. And now let's switch to our dashboard and see if anything changed. And as you can see now, my camera is not working. However, when I press buttons, the robot isn't working. I mean, the sphere is turned off, let me turn it on. But when I try moving, nothing works. And I guess the reason for that is I haven't actually changed the game template. We just put the simple game. So yeah, if you're trying to use one of our predefined game templates, make sure to actually put it in the uh, as a controller for your Raspberry Pi. 
otherwise you might be having an issue that it just doesn't work so let's go to the controller and go here and choose the game type as rover so now I am going to press continue let's wait for great it says everything is working so now let me actually go back to our game page and let's see if the robot will work now no my controls still don't work so this is happening sometimes like with some of the game templates you might have this issue that even though you change the template it still doesn't work however the easy fix is to just restart it so some of the game templates require a raspberry pi reboot to finalize the configuration so what i'm going to do is just reboot my raspberry pi once again so i'm just going to disconnect it from power and i'm going to plug it back in all right so now we have controller red streamer is showing green but it's actually red because our Raspberry Pi is rebooting, but once it reboots, uh, we will be able to test drive our rover, hopefully, and see if it's operating now. Okay, now everything is red, so the system knows that something is off, so nothing is working, but there we go. It's green again, so the Raspberry Pi rebooted. So now I'm gonna preview, and I'm gonna restart the rover once again, just in case, and there we go everything is working so that's another important thing to keep in mind uh, if you don't uh, like if you change the game template sometimes you might need to restart your device uh, your Raspberry Pi and your robot in order for them to communicate correctly your controller might still say that everything is good but actually it needs a reboot and yeah the robot is now fully working I think my camera is falling so I'm gonna fix that quickly there we go but the robot is driving around and I have my game running. Another quite common issue is that your robot is not showing up on the dashboard. Usually what that means is that you either didn't enter your correct token for the game, make sure that one is correct, just copy and paste it uh, without any modifications. And secondly, which is more common, is your Wi-Fi is not working. Uh, meaning that you probably didn't enter the correct Wi-Fi credentials. Make sure that you enter them exactly as matched on uh, exactly matching your router. So it has to be case sensitive. So there is upper and lower case letters, both in the SSID, that's the name of your network, and also on the password. So make sure that both of them are case sensitive and entered correctly. Also your game token, and then your robot will for sure connect to your game engine and your game. And another more simple common thing we see happening sometimes with game creators is that you gotta make sure that your dashboard uh, is well set up uh, in a nice way, in a correct way. So by default, everything should be working out of the box. But if you're messing with your dashboard or your game settings, that might be causing some issues. So for example, uh, let's move to our dashboard. And if you have your the game loop paused, maybe you pressed it by mistake or you were testing something, the game will never start. So if you're trying to queue up, uh, the game just won't start. So make sure that the uh, game loop is unpaused. This also pauses the adding your robots to the game. So if this is paused and you're adding your robot to your game engine, it might not uh, show up here in the sets. So make sure to always have that unpaused. Uh, additionally, uh, if you go to the settings and you also mess with the game engine settings here, for example, you set minimum amount of players to two, you were testing and potentially forgot that you added this. What you will see here is that the minimum amount of players is two, even though you only have one robot. Uh, what that means is that when you're trying to queue up to the game, let's actually put it online. What that means is that when you're trying to queue up to the game, uh, it will let you into the queue and into the game, but it will not start because it's waiting for that other uh, player to queue up. Another common issue we've seen is that make sure that your robot is actually enabled when trying to queue up to the game. So let's go to the dashboard and as you can see, I have my game online, but my robot is toggled as disabled. And what that means is that when I try to queue up, it will let me into the queue, but it will never start a game because there's no active robot for me to control, so the game will not start. So make sure that your robot is enabled, otherwise the game might not start. And you, you see, the moment I enable it, uh, it automatically lets me into the queue. I'm just gonna refresh the page to make sure that it's working. And there we go. 
the game is now running and I can control my robot. But what do you do if you did all of these things and your game still doesn't run? Uh, well, don't worry. We are going to go a bit more advanced now in this guy. We're going to go coder mode and we are actually going to enable remote SSH connection on our Raspberry Pi allowing us to connect to it from our computer and then we are going to analyze the logs and potentially even change some Raspberry Pi settings to try and fix some of the more common issues happening that we've seen. So let's start. First things first, uh, I'm going to turn off my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to take out the power cord from my power bank. So now the Raspberry Pi is off and I'm going to disconnect my SD card. The reason I need to do that is I need to enable SSH connection on my Raspi and the easiest way to do it is to just plug the SD card into your computer and then drop an SSH.txt uh, file to the Raspberry Pi SD card. So I'm going to plug in my SD card to my computer and now that that is done uh, I'm going to go to my computer, I'm going to open the computer, make sure that the Raspberry Pi is plugged in correctly. There we go. Sometimes you need to replug your SD card. I don't know why, but there we go. I replug the SD card, so I'm going to open the boot partition. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new text document that I'm going to call SSH. So what that does, it, me, uh, it tells the Raspberry Pi when it boots that SSH connection should be allowed to the Raspberry Pi. And then we are able to connect to it from our computer as long as we know the IP address. So now I'm going to disconnect my SD card from the computer. I'm going to plug it into the Raspberry Pi and I'm going to wait for it to boot. So now that I have my Raspberry Pi booted and the SSH file on the Raspberry Pi SD card, it means that we can remotely try and connect to our Raspberry Pi and try to understand what could be the issues there. So what I'm gonna do uh, is go to my dashboard and I'm gonna go down and find the IP address of my robot. The easiest way to do it is just open the, right click the controller of your Raspberry Pi and it will show the IP address right here. So I'm gonna copy that. I already have it here in my command prompt. Uh, so if you're using Windows, you should use CMD or command prompt to SSH uh, but if you're using a Mac or a Linux you can use terminal for this the commands are still the same so we're gonna write SSH pi at and then we're gonna do write the IP address so for me it's 1020 33 148 I'm gonna press enter and now it's gonna ask me for my uh, password so the default password on our image is creator 1337 and now I'm gonna press enter and there you go. Now I am connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now the nice thing uh, that we developed for you guys is this command called suro ctl, which works by default out of the box with our image. And when you enter it, it allows you to do a lot of things with our SDK without actually having to edit any code. The code will be added automatically. Like for example, we can check uh, the path to our current game, so to our Python file of the controller, and it's in games.rover.slash/rover/slash/game.py in our SDK. Or if I want to check our token to make sure that the token is the same one as uh, on the Raspberry Pi, no, that the token is the same as on our game engine, I can just write sudo ctl token, and I can see the token for my game. Uh, additionally, there's a lot of other commands. Uh, for example, you can restart the sudo ctl and that will restart the controller and the streamer of your robot. So let me show you how it works. So right now we have everything green, so both controller and streamer are green. So the moment I restart it, we are going uh, to lose the connection to our streamer and our controller. And there you go, executing restart of our controller and watch your stream and everything. And as you can see, the controller is currently red and now it's green again, so it has restarted. And as you can see here, the command does sudo systems to restart controller, which is our Raspberry Pi Python, SRTG, which streams the ultra low latency stream, 
uh, for the players and the SRTG Watcher stream, which is the Watcher view for your game. And let's go and see what other commands we can do. So one thing we can do is we can stop uh, our Raspberry Pi streamer and controller. So let's write sudo CPL stop. And as you can see, everything is now red. So the streamer and the controller are red. So the way you can fix that, if that is the case, you can of course uh, restart your Raspberry Pi and it will start automatically, or you can use the start command. Additionally, we have the uh, status uh, command, uh, which we can use to try and see what is currently happening on the Python in regards to our game engine. So for example, we can see here that everything is good. Uh, and also we can see how is the SRTG performing. So for example, right now, as you can see on our uh, SRTG logs, uh, we have an issue that there is uh, no audio device connected. Uh, this issue will not cause any errors, uh, but it just means that there is no audio device connected because the Raspberry Pi CSI camera doesn't have an audio device, so it is not able to fetch it. And then it tells you here, hey, there is no uh, audio device available right now. But my favorite command when using sudo ctl uh, is called sudo ctl logs. So let's go to our terminal once again. And as you can see, when I enter sudo ctl logs, it shows me the current status of our controller or our Python code in essence. The reason why it's quite convenient is then I can know uh, what is happening with my bot or what are the issues happening. But one thing, uh, if you if you use the sudo ctl logs, it only shows you the latest info until now. However, if you want your logs to be automatically updated and to continuously follow, what we're gonna do is press Ctrl C to end uh, reading the logs and I'm gonna go sudo ctl space logs space dash F. And what that does it is it follows uh, the logs command. So when I'm gonna press it, uh, the logs will continue to update every time I'm doing something. So now I'm gonna uh, go to the uh, end my preview for example and as you can see automatically here we are getting uh, answer from the logs of what is happening so with the logs command you can see what is exactly happening with your controller does your python and try to understand how to fix it uh, and actually you know what let's go and try to break our python uh, or cause an issue to see on the go how it works so in my case, I'm gonna go to our terminal again and I'm gonna write the command sudo raspy config. And because I'm using the Sphero rover, I know it uses the uh, serial port to communicate uh, between the Raspberry Pi and the Sphero rover. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, disable it. So I disable the hardware and the login shell and I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna reboot my Raspberry Pi. So before we had both the streamer and controller working and we were pretty happy with that. But now uh, I believe it's not gonna work anymore. It's gonna give us an error. So let's see what happens. All right, so our Raspberry Pi rebooted. So I'm gonna go to the dashboard. And as we can see, the controller is now red. I'm gonna once again SSH to our Raspberry Pi. And now we're gonna try and understand what is causing the issue. So we are gonna write again sudo ctl and then we're gonna write uh, logs and then dash f to follow it on the go. And as we can see, uh, currently we have some failure. So what we're gonna do is go and try to read what is actually happening. So let me put it to full screen. Let's go a bit up and let's try to read it and as we can see, uh, there is some issue with the serial. And now we're gonna go up and try to read the exact uh, logs. Actually, let me put it without the follow, because right now I maybe don't need follow, I just wanna see the issue. Uh, and now let's go up and try to read the logs. So main process exited, serial exception. Let's go up a bit higher. As you can see, reading through the logs is a more technical task per se, but it's very convenient to try and understand what could be causing the issue. For example, the serial issue 
is a very common thing, especially if you're doing a manual installation. If you use the manual installation of RSDK, the serial ports will not be enabled by default on the Raspberry Pi, and you'll have to do it manually. So we have the issue of controller service, main process exited, status failure. We can see that the serial util serial exception error could not open the port. Uh, dev serial zero. So in many cases, uh, based on the logs and the data you find, you can just copy literally the text of an error and Google it and find the solution. Additionally, you can go to our Discord community if you don't know what to do uh, and ask there. We have a really friendly community of game creators that will be happy to help and also the team, of course, the Sergey TV team. Uh, and yeah, it's it's an easy way. It's, it's, it's an easy way to get very detailed information of what is happening with your game and how to potentially find a way to solve it. But now that we identified the issue and kind of caused it, so I probably know what to do, how to solve it. Let's go back to our terminal. I'm gonna SSH once again to our Raspberry Pi. And now I'm gonna run sudo raspi-config command. And I'm gonna go to interface options, serial port. Uh, would you like the login shell to be accessible? No. Uh, and that, that's just how it works. Uh, and now we're gonna enable the hardware in it. Uh, and now we're gonna enable it. We're gonna finish, we're gonna reboot. And hopefully our controller will now be green. Now these more complex, uh, more advanced uh, debugging uh, tools like the Sura CTL are usually used by people who know how to use Python and edit code. Our game templates by default, especially if you use the image, we test them rigorously so they will most likely work out of the box. Of course, if you're stuck, make sure to write in our Discord community and we'll be happy to help. But if you're doing a custom game, you're modifying the Python, you're modifying other things, maybe you're adding extra camera devices or you're changing the video type you're using on the SRTG, etc you might uh, find these tools helpful. Uh, but okay, let's restart our Raspberry Pi. Let's wait for it to boot. And hopefully after that, our Sphere Rover will be once again up and running. All right, and it seems like our Sphere Rover rebooted. So let's go check the dashboard. And as we can see here, uh, it is showing green on the streamer and on the controller, which means that everything has been set up. And as you can see, I am able to move it around, no problem. And just to make sure, let's also SSH to our Raspberry Pi and make sure that all the configs are set up correctly. So we're going to go to the sudo ctl-logs, uh, no, sudo ctl-logs-f command. And as we can see, the Python isn't giving us any errors, which means everything is working as intended. Yeah, I guess this is the end of the video. We were able to find all types of issues possible when you're creating a game, both on the more basic setup and our more advanced. We learned how to SSH, how to use the Sewer CTL tools uh, to try and understand what is happening with your rover uh, or with your game, your robot, your Raspberry Pi and everything in between. And we hope you like this video. Share with your friends if somebody uh, in your game creator community is having issues creating a game and make sure to subscribe this channel. If you have any ideas of other videos we should make, let us know and we'll see you next time.